Hi, I am doing a little bit of a Q&A today. I went ahead and asked everybody for some questions over on TikTok. So if you're not following me there, I'll put all of the links down below. Go follow me over there. I post at least one video every single day, usually multiple videos a day. But these are some questions that you guys asked and wanted to know about our trying to conceive journey so far. And let's just hop right into it. I've got my computer down here. I'm gonna go ahead and go through, I think there's about 12 questions and we'll get started. First one we're gonna start off with is not really trying to conceive related, but I thought it was a fun way to start. It's about our little fur babies. So from Mickey Bird, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher all these names. Tell us about your fur babies. They're adorable. What's their names? What breed are they? And how old are they? So we have two little dogs. They're both poodles. Ellie is a little gray and black, kind of white. She's changed over time. She is 11 years old and her name is Ellie. And then Noelle is our white poodle and she is three now, I think, maybe two. <laughs> I should know this. I think she's, she just turned three, I think. She just finally is calming down and being less puppy-like and more chill, but they're very cute. I've had Ellie since I was like a junior in high school, so I've had her for a very long time. And Noelle, my husband and I got, um, when we moved into our first apartment together, we got her together. So she's our little baby, but we love them. And yep, that's the poodles. Me underscore two asked where am I from? I'm in the United States and I'll say Ohio. I don't want to get too specific, but I am in the Midwest Ohio area. I had two different people ask this one. Uh, Carly Flo and Bethany Lauren 1814. Actually, lots of people have asked this all throughout my videos. How long have you been trying for a baby? This is kind of a complicated question because it has a lot of different parts to it. I came off of birth control around August 2018. My husband and I were living together. We um, I was having a lot of side effects from the birth control and one of the things suggested to me was to stop taking it for a little while and um, kind of see how things go. And so when I did that, we both, my husband and I talked about it and decided that we weren't particularly trying for a baby at that point, but if it were to happen, we would be happy and we would be grateful and we were gonna kind of try without trying. I know there's a term for it that I can't think of. Prevent, try, something like that. But um, obviously we didn't get pregnant. And then as time went on, we got um, married, we got engaged, we got married, and then we've been seriously trying for a baby for a while. So I say since August 2018, because that's how long we have technically been trying, but as time has gone on, we've gotten more and more into the tracking and doing the ovulation tests and the temping and timing everything, and it's been a long journey. So 2018 of August is when I say we started. Mib Bisley, I think is the name, asked if this will be my first pregnancy or if I've been pregnant before. I have not been pregnant before. I have never gotten a positive pregnancy test. I, as far as I know, have not had a miscarriage or a chemical pregnancy or anything like that. Uh, whenever I end up pregnant, this will be the first time and our first child, both mine and my husband's. Mecky Bird, I believe, asked how many children would you and your husband like to have? We semi disagree on this, but we're mostly in the middle. My husband wants to have two kids. He thinks that would be a good amount for us. And I want two to three kids before I said four, but I feel like that's a little much. Two would be good, but then I think three, I don't know. So two to three. Two we both agree on. Sometimes I think three would be good. He's sticking at four. All right, getting into a little bit more of the, uh, the TMI information. So if you don't wanna know all the nitty gritties about our trying to conceive stuff, this is the end of the video. <laughs> If you want to know a little bit more and a little bit more background, stay tuned. So, um, Melissa Pfauer, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, uh, asked if my husband was tested to see if everything looks okay on his side. Sorry if it's too personal. I asked for questions, so no, it's not too personal. Um, he was tested. He tried to get tested earlier, and then um, Thanksgiving happened, and Christmas happened, and all the holidays have really been causing issues uh, with the testing places. Same with COVID. It's, it's limiting everything. And then he signed up for uh, testing and had a date set, and then that ended up being around when I ovulated, so then we had to cancel that appointment because you're not allowed to try for a couple days before you go get tested so we had to cancel that and move it so he finally got tested a couple weeks ago i think and everything came back normal um they said that everything looks really good for fertility that everything is good to go his white blood cell count was a little bit high which they said can be a sign of an infection or it can be just from alcohol because we had gone we had our three-year anniversary the day before that dating anniversary the day before that and so we went out and celebrated and had a um like wine with dinner and so could be just from having the wine with dinner or there could be an infection so he's getting that checked out but they said as far as fertility goes everything looked great 
So yay for that. He was very happy to hear that. He was quite nervous about that. Next question is from Mrs. Day 2018. And she asked, have you thought about doing IUI? Um, we obviously have. We've been at this for a little while now. So that is a, um, a legit question. Um, my husband is much less into that than I am. He just looks at kind of the money side of it and that here in the US it's very expensive and it's not covered by insurance. IUIs probably get up to like a thousand dollars. So um, a couple hundred depends on where it would go and what medication I would need and the ultrasounds and all that isn't, isn't covered. So it's expensive. Um, we're, I just got an HSG test in November which apparently is supposed to increase her fertility for three months and so I'm in month two of that. So my plan is to keep waiting that out, try this month and again next month. And then if that doesn't help, I'm gonna go back to the doctor and hopefully get put on letrozole. My doctor talked about that previously. And then try that for a few months and then if that doesn't work, then we would start talking about IUI. Um, IVF would be much further down the line because we have lots of things we're saving for and that would really take away from our savings. It is quite expensive here in the US. IVF is thousands and thousands of dollars. For those of you that live in other countries, quite lucky. Okay, again, next level of uh, information here. So click away if you don't want to know. Um, Maddie B. Raps says, have you found that fertility tracking has taken the romance and spontaneity out of your sex life with your husband? Not gonna get into too many specifics, just out of uh, respect for my husband. <laughs> um, but it definitely can at times. Um, when you're tracking your cycles, it gets very difficult um, to convince yourselves that this is <laughs> the night we want to be romantic because sometimes it's not very romantic. So in a way it has taken out um, some of the like romance, but my husband is a very good sport. I appreciate that about him. But the quick answer, yes, it's taken a little bit of it away, but we make it work because the end goal is to have a baby and that's what we're going for. <laughs> or Mick asked, when the day comes, we hope soon, are you worried about everybody finding out you are pregnant very early on? Sorry if that's too personal. Again, not too personal, I asked for all the questions. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I wish I could be posting to like my personal Facebook and my personal Instagram about everything that's been going on because trying to conceive has really impacted all areas of my life and especially my mental health. I have felt very drained and very defeated every month when my period comes and when I get negative test after negative test after negative test. I wish I could talk to more people about it, which is why I started the TikTok to show people that it's not always easy and it's not always quick or fun. And so I've found a really good community there and I really appreciate everybody's love and support. Um, but I'm not worried about people finding out because it, it'll be exciting and it'll be something we've been working for for a really long time. And I know people get nervous about sharing it early on because they're worried about if there's a miscarriage or if there's a loss. And if that were to happen, I would wanna be open and honest about that too. And people have been following me along on my journey for a while. So I want to include them in everything. And my original plan was to document our journey and that would be part of our journey. So if we do end up pregnant and we experience a miscarriage or a loss of some kind, then I would wanna still be documenting that because that's all part of it. Um, we would obviously tell the people closest to us that we're pregnant as soon as we find out. Um, my only concern that I do have is um, to making sure my husband is the first person that knows. So my plan is that on the TikToks that I make, make them every morning. So when I do a pregnancy test in the morning, the day that I find out I'm pregnant, I will have to kind of save that video to drafts until I tell my husband later on. So if you follow me on TikTok and you ever see um, that I haven't posted a morning, then that might be why, <laughs> because I want to make sure that my husband knows, again, out of respect, since it's his child, that he should know before thousands of other people online know, because I don't want it to get back to him without him knowing. So that's my only concern, but I've figured out a way around that. So no, I'm not worried about other people finding out. Shannon Gleason4 has a good question, uh, kind of two parts here. So we'll go with the first one first. What's your high and low thing about doing your trying to conceive journey? Which is a great question. I should have put more thought into this before I did it. But off the top of my head, that my low is probably just having the negative test after negative test, the pregnancy test specifically that every month I feel like it's gonna happen and this is gonna be it. And I get really excited. The charts look good, everything's looking good. People are cheering me on, I'm feeling it. And I'm like, yeah, this is it. And then I get negative tests and negative tests. I'm like, okay, well maybe, maybe it's too early or maybe I don't have enough HCG in my system or maybe, 
and then my period comes and then I feel so defeated and so upset and so sad and it's really awful and devastating and it gets me every time and then I always tell myself I'm not going to get excited if it doesn't happen this month it's okay like we're going to keep an open mind and I say that way for most of the time and then when I'm in the two-week wait and I'm waiting for that test I seem to always forget so that's definitely the low of that it just keeps taking so long and that I just have all these months where I think this is the one and then it's not and it, it's really defeating for sure um hi there's been a lot of highs um I'm gonna say two and she can say two of them uh one is just kind of like thinking about the future and feeling like it's closer um I've wanted to be a mom for a super long time and it's been something I've always wanted and so the fact that I, it feels like it's close it feels like it's coming that all the stuff I've had saved in my Amazon carts for like years and all of these names that I've been thinking of for like my whole life it, it's getting closer and it's gonna be a reality soon maybe not this month maybe not next month maybe not for a year but every month I'm getting closer and it's getting more real which is super exciting and other high it's probably all the people that I've met I was feeling really lonely before and feeling like something was wrong with me and that I was broken in some way. But then when I started meeting people, especially on TikTok, other trying to conceive ladies and other people and parents who have been in the situation before, I've met so many awesome people and I talk to multiple, multiple people daily and we check in with each other and we cheer each other on and it's really boosted my spirits and it makes those hard days better to know that people care and that people are on your side and they want to see you succeed and they want to cheer you on and that makes a really big difference so thank you if you're one of those people i appreciate it second part of that question from shannon gleason is can you please give some of your top names and let me just tell you i love baby names like a lot ever since i was in like seventh grade like over 15 years ago I, that's probably the wrong math, but um, I have loved doing baby names. I've been on baby name forums since I was a little kid because I'm just weird. <laughs> I like baby names and I've been collecting names for a super long time. The questions that I wrote on here are actually on my baby name list. So I'm gonna scroll up a little bit, but um, I'm way better at coming up with girl names than boy names. Um, I'll give you a few just in case these are the names we actually use. Uh, I don't wanna give away anything, but girl names, I love like vintage names. I love Henrietta. I love Delilah, I love Ophelia, um, Evangeline is really pretty, kind of those long, flowy, pretty names. I also love Lennox, which doesn't really fit in with that, but I think that's a pretty name. But I have uh, eight page, I have an eight page document full of baby names, and I have my favorite names bolded, and then I have um, nice um, middle names underneath. I was gonna hold it up to show. I don't know if you can see that, but <laughs> it has lots of different names. And then as far as boys, I have a much harder time figuring out boy names that I like. But currently, right now, Sullivan and Felix are probably my top boy names. I really like Atlas. I really like Sloan. I like Fitzgerald, Dexter, Lennox again. I have so many names I like. I'll do a whole nother video about names because there's so many that I love and have loved for a long time. <laughs> All right, and the last question is from Soupcorn. It uh, says, your favorite fertility slash trying to conceive content creators on TikTok and YouTube. I have so many, so many favorites. Um, I have people who are now I consider friends because we've bonded over this experience and I have people that I follow to gain knowledge and information. I have people that uh, have been doing this much longer than me that I find really inspiring. So um, instead of sitting here and listing them all off for you, I will put down below in the description a bunch of people that I follow that I would recommend and I find inspiring or helpful or just good people. Um, also, if you are a creator who makes videos on TikTok or YouTube about fertility or about trying to conceive, let me know, put your information down below and I will check out your, your uh, videos or your creations art that you make and um, hopefully you guys will check some out too. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for everybody who asked questions. Hopefully that helped you get to know me a little bit better. I tried to give detailed information without giving away too much information. Sometime I'd love to do a video with my husband on here as well. And then I would feel a lot more comfortable sharing things because I don't wanna share anything that he feels is too personal since this is on the internet where anybody can find it. I wanna make sure I'm being respectful of him and of our personal lives as well. So. Let me know in the comments below what other questions you have and what else you would like to see. Um, hopefully soon, I will be having a uh, 
positive pregnancy test, I hope. I am currently 60 PO today, so in the next couple days I will start testing and I really, really hope this is the month. So thank you. Um, I'll put all the information down below, all the questions, all of that. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.